From a secret location in Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. What's happening, hot stuff? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I've gotten a lot of emails from people, and I want to talk about this for a moment. I've gotten a lot of emails from people who have... Had a one-night stand or had a, just a brief fling with somebody. And then they are afraid that something or other happened. Let me give you some examples without busting any of the individuals who wrote in. One of the things that has come up many times is the number of people who have written in and said, uh, you know, I realize what a skank I slept with. And I know that one time we didn't use a rubber. And tell me if you've ever thought about this, and if I give you a bad dream because of this, don't blame me, okay? A number of guys write in to say they wonder if the person they slept with is HIV positive or has AIDS. And it appears to me, based on the mail I get that there's a number of people who actually have made telephone calls. This is true. They have made telephone calls to exes. Sometimes what they do is they just hang up when the person answers, and in their head they're saying, oh, she's still alive. How many of you have ever called somebody and gotten into a conversation with them? Just to find out how their health is. Have you done this? How you been? <laughs> I'm telling you, I've read these emails. They're really funny. Well, they're funny to me because I'm not the one making these calls. Hey, how you been? Yeah, I know I haven't called you in about a year. I was just wondering how you're doing. Health okay? <laughs> Feeling good? Yeah, me too. Feeling great. Uh, I was just wondering how you were feeling. Uh-huh. <laughs> How many of you have made a call like that? How many of you have done that? Think about it. Now, of course, there are many of you out there who never give it a second thought. You just go out there and do anybody you feel like it, and that's it. But I'm curious how many people have actually made that phone call. Do you, know, you did dial somebody up just to see if they're still alive? Or to see if they have pneumonia? Or to see how their health has been lately? Ever talk to their relatives? You ever get the mom on the phone? Hey, I, just, I was just calling to say hi. How's she doing? Come on. I know you guys do it because you write in and tell me you do it. How many of you ask around? You know, ask friends in the neighborhood or friends at school? Hey, uh, Jennifer, you ever hear from her? How's she doing? Is she doing okay? That's great. I'll bet there's people listening to me right now who've made that phone call, right? You know, it's one of the little time bombs out there that could go off. You know, anytime you have sex with somebody, it uh, sets off the possibility of a time bomb. Now, the other one that I hear about a lot is the one when guys write to me and tell me that uh, they had sex with somebody and uh, maybe they didn't use a condom or maybe the condom slipped. Or maybe something happened, and um, you never talked to her again. And then later on, you find yourself wondering, I wonder if she ever got pregnant. 
but you don't want to actually call her and talk to her. So what you do is you <laughs> you kind of ask around. How's she doing? Is she still in school? Ah, you know, I I heard uh, somebody tell me she had a kid. Uh, do you hear about that? No. Yes. What? Yes. Things like that. And there can be all kinds of other time bombs that go off. You ever think about some of these? They, they just could, uh, you know, something bad that could happen to you as a result of having had sex with somebody in the past. For example, maybe you had sex. You ever done this? Ever had sex with uh, your buddy's girlfriend or your buddy's wife or your buddy's ex-wife, your buddy's ex-girlfriend or your buddy's booty call? Did you ever step right in and help yourself? And then spend your time wondering if anybody would ever find out about it. Oh, my God. Here's another one. How many of you have ever made a pass at somebody when you had a few drinks? Like, let's say, your girlfriend's mom. <laughs> and then later you're wondering, you're wondering if she ever told. You know what I'm talking about? How many of you have done that? Right, these are what I call time bombs. These are little things you pull the uh, you pull the ring from the grenade, and then you never know they might go off at any time. I'm wondering if you have any little time bombs like that, that out there that you have to ask around about, or you have to inquire about, or maybe you sneakily dial people's numbers and hang up when you have the information you need. If you have little time bombs like that, I'd like to hear what they are. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 What's at the base of all of this, you know, uh, banging chick? It's like, it's kind of a biological urge. What's at the base of eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day? <laughs> okay, all right. It's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Do you have any of those ticking time bombs out there? Are you wondering what happened as a result of banging somebody or knowing somebody or doing something with somebody? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Jose on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? It's going okay. Uh, I'm like a ticking time bomb right now. What is it? Well, you know, I have a girlfriend and a uh, couple of well, it's been a year now. We've, we had a party and, you know, the sister, she came on to me and, you know, she got my girl drunk. You know, she, she probably was playing the part all along and... What do you mean she was playing the part all along? Like, you know, I was trying to, I didn't think about it in the beginning, like that way, oh wow, we're gonna end up sleeping together or something like that. And she, during the party, she was like, hey, you know, since my sister doesn't want to dance, let's go dance. So I figured, well, there's nothing wrong, you know, it's, you know, it's her sister, why not? It's not we're not going to dance any kind of provocative dance or anything, so. But she, I guess, I, after whatever, everything happens, uh, we went, my girl, she got so drunk, we went back to my place, and her sister was like, hey, you know, do you need help? You know, I was like... Let me help you take her back to the house and, you know, put her asleep. I was like, yeah, you know, I didn't think nothing of it. I was like, yeah, you know, why not, you know? And then you could maybe drop me off home later. I was like, all right, cool. So we all went back to my place. My girl's like, vomiting, passed out. We put her in the bed, so she was like, wow, I'm tired, you know? It's like, yeah, I'm tired, too. Do you mind if I crash tonight? And I was like, no, not at all. You know, we had that extra bedroom in the back. Go ahead, you know? It's all good. So, uh... Later on that night, you know, I'm, I had a couple of drinks, but I wasn't drunk. She had a couple of drinks. My girl was just snoring away. She came into my bedroom and, you know, started getting on top of me. I was like, whoa, what is going on, you know? Next thing you know, it led to things, and, wow, it's been a year. We're still going at it. Behind yeah, wait, so you, you've been banging her for a year. You didn't just do it once. Nah, we've been going at it. It's been so good that we've been going at it back and forth. Unbelievable. And, and so then, um, what happened? Uh, well, what happened after that? 
Well, it's it's it's, it's ready to explode. So you're bagging both of them. How do you how do you squeeze the both into your schedule? You know, I. Um, my girl is uh, after work, and her sister is doing work. So, you know, now I'm just, like, caught up in the middle, and I'm loving it. You're loving being caught up in the middle. What? How will you feel if your girl finds out about this? I, I No words. No words. Maybe, hey, I've been listening to Tom. He's right. You know, I, I'm not a man with uh, just one woman. You know, I need more women in my life. Well, why, why do you have a girlfriend? That's what I keep on saying to myself, and I try to break it off. I was like, hey, you know, you know, I need time alone. Uh, I just want to get away, you know, for a while. And, you know, but she's the kind of person that if I would say that, she's like, oh, you're seeing someone else. Uh, you know, uh, you're doing something behind my back and blah, blah. I was like, dude, whatever, you know. you. I don't need to hear all that. You know, I'm a 33-year-old guy, and uh, I just, I don't need a girl right now, you know. Uh, I don't. And then she starts crying, and, you know, it's like she blows off steam. I was like, all right, whatever. You you do whatever you want to do, and, you know. And I stick with the sister. You know, when she gets mad, I stick with the sister. It's like, you know, hello? Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah, I, I just stick with the sister. I tell her, I feel bad today. I'm going out with the boys. I'll be back. Go hang out with the sister. Well, simple, Tom. well uh, I'm sorry, Jose. Could you say that again? I'm not hearing you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, this is uh, ready to blow up any minute. I'm thinking the day she finds out that me and her sister is going behind her back, it's just going to blow up big time. Wow. But uh, in the meanwhile, I'm loving it. The sister's loving it. I mean... We don't complain, hey, you know, it's like, I have nothing to complain, you know. I, 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 here's the thing, I don't understand the purpose of a girlfriend. You're banging her sister, you're banging her. Right. And you don't love this girl. I don't, I actually don't. So so why do you have a girlfriend? Just so, you, you're just going to pretend that she's your girlfriend so you can keep banging uh, the, the two of them, is that what it is? So what happens? Yeah. So when the girlfriend finds out, you don't care. Who cares? You know, sometimes I just tell her, yeah, you're my girlfriend. Maybe just to keep her around, you know. But I don't really take it serious. Sometimes it's like, yeah, whatever, you know. Unbelievable. But I love it, Tom. I can't wait to her to blow up and see what's going to happen. From right now, I'm still loving it. I don't say, well, good luck on that. There he is. Doesn't, it's, the thing to me about that, though, is it doesn't really come to the level of a time bomb. And here's why. Because he doesn't care. He doesn't really care. He's not worried about this. Oh, sure, she, the girlfriend might find out. And when the girlfriend finds out, he won't be getting it from either one of them. The girlfriend or the girlfriend's sister, he won't be getting it. But I'm, I'm listening to this story, and I'm trying to understand what's going on. But in reality, this is not what I'm talking about. This is not like being afraid that the chick you banged is HIV positive or has AIDS or got pregnant. Or like you uh, they tried to put the hit on your girlfriend's mom or something, and now you're afraid that mom is going to say something or... It, it, it's nothing like that. He he's has his cake, he eats it too, and he'll take it for as long as he can get it, and then when it's done, it's done. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Dale. We're looking for those time bombs you have. Hello. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. Outstanding. Uh, long story short, about 1999, I was dating this chick, uh... And uh, we were fooling around for about six, seven months, and uh, we broke up. And I met her about uh, about a year and a half later, and we met in a Safeway. And I, you know, when, as soon as I saw her, I backed up, turned around, because just seeing her face, you know, it's like whoa. And she had three kids at the time, which is probably my first mistake right there, and I should know better. <laughs> but anyways. Uh, uh, she, she, I, I went to go find her again. I was actually with my, a girlfriend at the time. Went to go find her. She took off. Well, I saw her out in the parking lot, and uh, she pulled up in a station wagon, or excuse me, not a station wagon, like a, a Voyager, 
And uh, she's like, uh, so you want to see your kid? And I'm like, uh, well, I, I guess, you know, sure, whatever. So I went there. I saw the I saw the kid, blonde hair, blue eyes, not even close to me, you know, then. So I was like, okay, whatever. And she said, don't worry about it. I'm taken care of. I'm married to a doctor or going to be married to a doctor. So uh, I said, fine. Uh, about three weeks ago, I got a phone call again from uh, from the same girl, and she said that, um, well, first I was kind of, I was like, well, is there something wrong with the kid? Because I didn't know, you know, why would she be calling me after eight years? And then uh, she said, well, the kid's been acting out, so I want to know uh, what you want to do about it. <laughs> so what'd you do? Uh, well, I haven't done nothing. That was three weeks ago. I got to think about this one for a while. I got to, but uh, first thing, obviously, I got to do is get, get a paternity test before I even try to evaluate the situation. And then uh, I'm remarried. I've been married for about five years. I got a good wife. She's uh, really cool about it. She, you know, she's obviously freaked out about the situation. And. Uh, <laughs> I'm, you know, to be honest with you, I don't know what to do about the situation. Talk to other guy with my family to see what they, you know, see what they thought about it. But it's kind of a freaky situation, and that's what I consider a time bomb, Tom. Oh, boy. And the thing is, for you, the time bomb is going off. Yeah, you know, it's, what's really odd about it is, you know, if she was after money, why would she wait eight years? You know, and I actually asked her, I was like, well, uh, are you, I mean, the first thing, question out of my mouth, you know, after I asked if the kid was fine, do you want? Do you need money? I mean, is this about money? She's like, no. If the kid just acting out. It's like, well, what are you doing for a living? Because at the time when I when I got rid of her, she was unemployed, and I couldn't handle that. And uh, she uh, said she she's a nurse now at a hospital. So I was like, well, I guess she's got you know she should be making pretty decent money. And the three kids that she had, one was twelve at the time, so he's like twenty now. The other one's probably out of the house. It was uh, she was probably like nine. Got to be pretty close to out of the house. And the youngest was four, so she's got to be twelve now. Um, so I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what to think about it. Tom, I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, first of all, uh, for the guys listening, this is why I tell you not to do a single mom because this is what you get. Yeah, this is this, see, I'm about ready to have a hell of a learning experience. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry you weren't listening that far ago because. Uh, I've been saying this for a very long time. No single mothers. No single mothers. No single mothers. That was pretty stupid. I, I got to admit, you know, I, I started listening to you about five or six years ago. And my wife now, we have no kids together. And I don't think she has any intentions of having any kids. But now she's got a kid. Well, you know, possibly has a kid on the way. <laughs> oh, my. With that, with that diaper training, right? Uh, it's outrageous, and and now so what? Are, what are the kid is acting out? What do you want to do about it? Like, well, guess what? The, the way the kid is acting is a result of how he's been brought up the past eight years. Exactly, and it's like the other freaky thing. It's like okay, so so the kid is my son, right? So now I go meet the kid. Haven't known the kid his whole life. Hey, I'm your dad. Kid's eight years old. You know how is that going to be? How is that going to hold up? Wow. Uh, do you really want to be involved in this? You know what? I, you know, to be honest with you, you know, I don't know. Maybe I, I might just just let it hang and see see if she calls me back, or you know, and then obviously then I have to go, you know, act upon that. You know, what's really strange is uh, the kid's blonde hair. I mean, which doesn't mean nothing. You know, it's, uh, things you know, her her or her, uh, genetics. She you know, they bounce around along from time to time. They could have, but you know, neither one of us had blonde hair, blue eyes. Now, how did she find you? Uh, well, she's my. I still live at the same place when I got rid of her. Same numbers, so it really wasn't really hard to find me. That's outrageous. Did she tell you why she didn't call you and let you know this had happened? <sighs> you know, she really didn't give a good answer. Uh, she, went, a long time ago, she said. Well, she asked me what I wanted to do about this. This the first time I saw her. You know, that that year and a half, and I was like. Honestly, I don't want to have nothing to do with you. I don't want to have nothing to do with the kid because I really doubt it's mine. So if you don't ever talk to me again, it'd be too soon. And uh, she said, okay, fine. We won't do anything about it. And then, uh, you know, six years later after that, round two. Unbelievable. <laughs> Outrageous. So I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, what would you do, Tom, if you were in this situation? Would you just leave the dog lie? 
I want no part of it. If there's somebody out there who had a kid with my sperm, I've said on the radio many times, don't call me. Don't expect a uh, warm welcome or a family reunion to ever happen because it never will. Never. Never. So you think, you think uh, that she'll call me or you think I should just leave it lie if she calls me then deal with it? Um, well, at this point in time, uh, you haven't been served with papers. No. That you know of. No, I haven't. So there's probably nothing you can do. If I were you, I would certainly talk to an attorney to make sure that your interests are covered. I would do that for sure. Yeah, because one thing I want to check on to, for one, I mean, if I have to pay child support, you know, you got to be responsible. I make good money, and, you know, hopefully that's not going to be a, a big problem, but... Uh, um, you know, it, I hopefully, one, it's retroactive. You know what I'm saying? If they try to go back eight years, which I, you know... They, they can. That, in California, they can. Well, I live in Oregon, so... I don't know what the law is in Oregon, but I'll bet it's not much better. Yeah, I'm sure it's not. But, you know, to me, that would be ridiculous, too. You know, how can they go retroactive on something you didn't know about? They can do it when it's women, because women are given the prerogative to do whatever they want. Whenever they want to change their minds or anything else. That's just absolutely ridiculous to me. <laughs> That's how it is. Well, damn, Tom, it's been a pleasure, sir. I don't know if uh, you got any get better advice than that. I mean, I'm just, uh, you know, beating this one around in my Well, brain. there isn't much that can be done. The kid's there. So there's no Hail Marys or anything. The kid's been born. Yeah. I, um, I would simply talk to an attorney. Yeah. Now, I've known people over the years who have varying opinions about whether they want to be involved with the kid or not, or whether they want to pay child support or not, or whatever. But uh, if you don't want to be involved, don't get involved. Yeah. I, I'm know, telling like, you right now, I, I'll do whatever I'm legally required to do. That's, yeah, that's my thoughts on it, too. But I tell you, when she first called and she told me that, it was like getting kicked right in the nuts. I'm sure it was. <laughs> I mean, I, I sat there in the bathroom and just like, I mean, you have nothing going through your mind except for, oh, my life's over. Right. Holy Jesus. <laughs> oh, I am, believe me. Uh, I have, uh, I have wakened up, awakened, wakened up, yes. I have awakened in a cold sweat. Uh, I've had this as a bad dream thousands of times. Thousands of times. I, you know, this is worse than dying in my dream. Yeah, I, I'd rather die than to get a call from some bitch I nailed one time and now have to pay her tens of thousands of dollars. I would rather fall off a cliff. It makes me sick, Tom. It makes me absolutely sick because I'm 35 years old. You know, I got, I make six figures. I own two houses. Um, I got four timeshares in Maui. You know, it's like, oh, Jesus, here we go. You know what I mean? I just finally get my life established, and now this crap. Amazing. You know, what do you do with it? <laughs> well, you're exactly right. Well, Dale, good luck. Keep us informed. I'd love to know how this turns out. Well, I appreciate it, sir. And maybe uh, maybe in a few months, if I, if I resolve this thing, I'll definitely call you back and give you the results. There's there's a time bomb going off, boy. I'll tell you what. Thank you, Dale, for that call. That's what I'm talking about. Except it's already going off. He's not losing sleep over it happening. It has happened. Do you have one of those little time bombs out there? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. One little time bombs where you did something with somebody, and now you're losing sleep over uh, what the results of that experience are going to be. Let's say hi here to Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tony. How you doing? Great. Good. Uh, well, my little time bomb, I hope it never goes off, but uh, I'm banging my boss's ex-girlfriend. You're banging your boss's ex-girlfriend? Do you like your job? Uh, yeah, I do. Can't you find chicks? Oh, sure. Well, you're going to get fired when he finds out. Yeah. If, you know. No, no. You say if. Chicks, let me tell you something about women. Women can't have sex without uh, beating the jungle drums and letting everybody know they're having sex and who they're having sex with. They just don't. Yeah, you're probably right, Tom. I mean, there's other people who know that she's having sex with you. Ah, uh, 
Yeah, it could possibly be true. Not possibly. This this is a lock. Yeah. And women don't have sex without telling their mom, their sisters, really, their girlfriend. Are you? Do you think they're like us? Oh, uh, I was hoping not. They tell everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting kind of deep and involved, too, and that's the first thing that I didn't want to happen. Deep and involved? Why did you let that happen? Yeah, it was getting too nice. Why did you let that happen? Well, I mean, it's not there, really, but I think I'm at a good point right now where I can make it stop. How? Well, you know, stop talking to her. And then what's her incentive to keep it quiet then? <laughs> I got to cut it off somewhere, right? I'm asking you, do you uh, think these things out? Thinking about it now. Right. Well, well you well, might get fired. That's a good point. And during a recession, can anybody really afford this? I don't know, man. It was good while it lasted. Yeah, but th y y that's like there's no other vaginas out there. I guess it's one of those things where it's like uh, the excitement of it all and, you know, it's got caught up in it, I guess. Yeah, but the, the point is you never should do something like that because if your job is at stake, you're going to lose sleep over this. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. It's probably not worth it. It's definitely not worth it at all. Nah, this is what I warn guys not to do all the time. Don't fish off the company pier. <laughs> I was telling Dino I had to close my door to call you. No oh boy. <laughs> All right, Tony. Take me out to African tribal style, Tom. African tribal style. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. JV on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Good evening, Tom. How are you doing? I'm I doing do okay. Care. Great. I do care. I'm doing okay. great. Great. Well, I just wanted to live. Doing great. Two years ago. Doing great. We'll do it live. <laughs> we'll do it live. F it. We'll do it live. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. <laughs> do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. All right, JV. I love that. All right, check this out. Two years. Dave's out. Now we had to bleep you. Oh, my bad. Okay, I didn't know that. I did not know that. I Last I... names? Are you kidding me? Really? I just because we can get sued. If you, uh, we don't know if what you're about to say is true. Oh, okay. Okay, my no mistake. last names of people. No last names. Got it. Okay, can I say where they work? No, why would you need to say that? Just tell us what kind of job they have. Okay, well, she works where I work. I won't say that, where she works and where I worked. But two years ago, that's where she worked. That's why I met she her. She works for a hamburger place that has golden arches, but I don't want to say what name it is, what the name of the company is. Yeah. Nothing like that. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, she was where she worked two years ago, where I still work, where I've worked for the past eight years, and I had a one-night stand with her. I took her home. And something went wrong with my stuff. It actually started turning green and spitting out green stuff, and it felt like razor blades were coming out. So I got checked out and found out she gave me chlamydia. And the doctor also told me, you know, when I received that, he said, you know, also you've had for the past year, you've had syphilis. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, if you didn't come in and get checked because this messed up, you know, your privates down there, you could have died within the next few months, just went to sleep and never woke up again. And, you know, since, you know, we cut it off and I couldn't stand her no more, I didn't tell her. I did not tell her what I gave her. I did not tell her what she gave me. I went around basically even before I went to the doctor spreading that like just like the outbreak monkey and just getting the, you know, just now the fact that that happened, I just get a kick out of it. I think it's great because when I spread these things, you know, even if I have some now and I spread it with all my sexual partners, I think it's great because their boyfriend's getting it, their man's getting it, their husband's getting it. Because women are just scum of the earth, you know. I have no regards for them whatsoever, and I'm very malicious. My street name actually goes by Malice. I actually live, live very well up to my street name. And I've even gotten some one-night stands pregnant, which... Some of a few of them were what you told me not to do, like I guess my boss's wives, my boss's girlfriends, and I did actually get fired like two or three times with the unions got my job back. <laughs> but you're pretty you're pretty happy about it too. <laughs> 
I love it, dude. It's just it's an <sighs> adrenaline rush. I'm an adrenaline junkie. Oh Jesus Christ! Tom, 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 like this. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. People always say to me, they say, um, "Well, do you have a daughter?" I, I usually tell them, I say. No, I usually have somebody else's dog. <laughs> Sometimes twice. It's the Tom Likey Show. It's the Tom Likey Show. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for part of our program. We appreciate it. Yes, we do. And we are talking about those little time bombs you've got that could be going off at any given time. You bang somebody, maybe they had AIDS, maybe they had HIV, maybe you're going to have an STD, maybe you've got a kid out there, maybe you were making a pass at somebody you shouldn't have been making a pass at. Well, if you've got one of those out there that you worry about, 1-800-5800-TOM is your telephone number. It's one 800 8666 Carlos on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much. Hey, uh, I was telling you uh, your screen caller that uh, a while back I got wait, a wait, you were from, my uh, screen caller. Uh, <laughs> or Dom? What's your name? Dom Demilio? Or what's his name? Oh, Demilio. Let's get Mister Demilio in here. Find out what uh, the screen caller was talking about with you. Man. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Come on, dude. <laughs> This is Sit great. right down. Grand. All right. Thanks, Carlos. So were you having a Dagolicious uh, oh, conversation boy. here with Carlos? I just uh, asked him the standard questions, and uh, it turns out that uh, Carlos is suffering through the nightmare right now. He is uh, in the middle of it. Uh, it's already exploded. He got a uh, legal letter, from, an, uh, obviously from an attorney, uh, requesting DNA. Uh, therefore, he believes that it's possible he could be the father. However, where the letter was sent from, uh, he doesn't uh, even recognize the city. Therefore, he doesn't really think the kid is his. Is, is the city in Nigeria? <laughs> it's some weird name, like Ukaipa or is, something like is that. Is the mother of the child named Mariam Abacha? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they're requesting to give him, you know, $78 million. Is he supposed to wire uh, his uh, entire bank account uh, to Ghana or uh, Kenya? They just need a few uh, important uh, facts about him, like his bank account number and so forth. Right. So, yeah, I'm sure they're willing to help him out. That, by the way, would be one of the great, you know, go right up there with the Nigerian scam. If somebody started writing, people go, uh, because my client had a one-night stand with you in 2003, uh, you just start sending money immediately to, to our bank account. You laugh, that'll probably be up tomorrow. I bet it will be if it isn't already. So uh, Carlos is a little worried. He hasn't responded yet, and... Uh, yeah. Now we'll never know. No. All right. Well, thank you for that, Dean. Thank you, sir. Dean D'Amelio, uh, there he goes, our, our, our screen caller. <laughs> there he goes. And, uh, you know, when you call me on the air and you say you had a conversation with my screener, I'm going to get my screener in here to tell me what you two talked about. I'm ready to rock. Who needs you? Who needs you? one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. This is Eric on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Eric. So, what up? so um, I had a situation where I just came back home from Washington. I just graduated with my, uh, I'm going to go to med school in the fall coming up. And um, towards the end, like, I started banging this chick. And I didn't know at that time that she had uh, mental problems. <laughs> so, and like, you didn't know? Well, she had sex with you. Wasn't that a clue? <laughs> it should have been, but, you know. Hey, I like the crazy. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but um, so I leave Washington, and she's like asking me, like, so what? Do we, what happens when you leave? Like, what are you gonna do? And I was like, nothing, you know. Like, I'm gone. We're not gonna be together. Like, there's nothing that can happen, you know. And so I, a few days after I come back to Washington, she calls me and is like, Hey, I'm so depressed. I can't believe like you left me like that. Blah 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 blah. So fast forward a few weeks, I'm starting school again, like in summer school for this science class I need to take. And um, I get this MySpace from her telling me that she's going to kill herself if we're not together and like, she misses me so much. And honestly, Tom, I was banging this girl for two weeks. So I don't understand, like, what's going on here. Why but, do like, you care? You know what I say? Go ahead. Have at it, honey. <laughs> kill yourself. 
So should I just dump that bitch or what? What? I, <laughs> do you have to ask this question? Well, I mean, like, how do I do it in a way that, like, I don't, it's not my fault. Who cares? Myself, you know? <laughs> Who cares? Why do you care? Just so, you if know. If she's I'm crazy saying, enough to kill herself, and nothing you say is going to make it any different, just let it go. You're right. You're definitely right. Oh, stop being a pussy. What are you worried about? So what if she kills herself? Big deal. You know, I just don't want those kind of things on my conscience, you know, that somebody killed Why is it on your conscience? She wanted to have sex with you. You wanted to have sex with her. Very true. Why is that on your conscience? Now she's a loon and she wants to kill herself. Whose fault is that? Yours? Well, no, no, not at all. But I'm just saying that. If she know. told you, I'm having sex with you, but if things don't work out, I'm going to kill myself, you wouldn't have had uh, sex with her. No, absolutely not. Absolutely, you're right. All right, but you did, and she never told you, and now you find out she's insane. Yeah. <laughs> is that a common problem with you sometimes, Tom? You find out gr girls are insane after you bang them? They, they find out they're what? You find out that girls are insane after you bang oh, them? I, well, I have, uh, but uh, you know what I do? I stop seeing them. And if they threaten to kill themselves, I say, have at it. True. Well, it really makes no difference. Not cause, like, do, you know not I was, do you know I was married to somebody? I understand. Yeah. Uh, in L.A., my show is on from uh, 3 o'clock on, you know, so I leave home about 2.30. Yeah. Get to work, okay? So one day I'm on the way out the door at 2.30, and my wife at the time comes to me and says, when you come home, I won't be here because I will have killed myself. She took a butcher knife into the bathroom. And so she locks the door, and I, I yell through the door, and here's what I said. I said, well, I got to go because the show starts at 3, but I'm sure you'll be here when I get back. <laughs> Damn if she wasn't there when I got back. <laughs> well, hey, you know, um, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to change my number so she stops calling me and then just, like, not talk to her. And, um, actually, can you take me out with a uh, bong grip and blow me up after that? Yes. Yes, I can. one 800 800 tom that's our telephone number. Here's Lance. We're talking about those little time bombs. That, uh, you know, you did something somewhere along the way, and now you may have to pay the piper, and you're worried that the time bomb is going to go off. Lance, hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm doing okay. Yeah, so uh, I slept with my best friend's little sister. and I Your mean, best friend's me... little sister? Yes, yeah, yeah. How little is she? Uh, Ten years younger than me. So she's 25. He was 20 at the time. I was 30. This is five years ago. All right. Uh, and this is a classmate from college. Uh, I was the best man at his wedding. Since this has happened, he has actually been the best man at my wedding. Um, I just feel I feel guilty about it. I don't. I feel like I need to tell him, but I just can't get up the courage. You know. Now, why did you do this? Besides the fact that you wanted to get late. Uh. That's pretty much it. I wanted to get laid. She wanted to get laid. But weren't you concerned about what your best friend might think about that? Yes. Yes, I was. You weren't, I you weren't that concerned? No. Not, not concerned enough to uh, turn it away, that's for sure. You're serious? Oh, boy. So she hasn't said anything so far. No, it's been five years. So Have you seen I... her? Was she at the two weddings, for example? Yes. And did she have a date at those weddings? Um, yes, she is actually, she has gotten married and divorced since then. So I could be in the clear. Has she tried contacting you or? No. Uh, did she ever try contacting you? Uh, no, she seems, I mean, we talked about it afterwards. In fact, we kind of talked about dating for a while, but, uh, it just never panned out and she, uh, she seems pretty cool about it. I I worry about what might happen. You know? Did you ever tell her that uh, you didn't want her to say anything? No. She just didn't. Right. Well, could be that she's as worried about it as you are. Yeah, that's what I, uh, I think. I mean, um, if it's gone this far. Yeah. Well, your defense, and by the way, with your best friend, you really shouldn't be doing the things like this. Uh, but the lie you will have to use ultimately will be, uh, she told me you were cool with it. Yeah, okay. I would yeah. never have done that if she hadn't told me you were cool with it. 
<laughs> or you would be cool with it. Yeah. That's what you have to do. Cool. You got to use the right lie. I'll just be sitting on that ace until, if and when it happens. That's what you got to do. Cool. Great. Well, thanks, Tom. Well, thanks. Blow me up. I'll blow you up, baby. Here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Gerald on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Gerald. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. I got a good one for you. Okay, it's going to be short and sweet. I met this woman at the bar. Went out with her a couple of times. Took her out. Banged her a couple of times. But here's the thing. Listen to been listening to you for a long time. I had my two kids early, a long time ago. Got a vasectomy. Doctor told me way a long time ago it was 0.05% that most men, they would come back together. But what he did was he guaranteed me that there was nothing would happen. So I went out and banged this girl. Condom broke. I didn't think nothing of it. No problem. So I figured, okay, I'll sneak around again before I get married. Once I got married, I banged her again. Turned around. Didn't call her for a while. I said, ah, let me see what's going on with her. Called her from my cousin's house. My cousin's phone. Well, that was not quite as short and sweet as you said it was going to be. The Tom Likas Show.